everyone, it's so nice to see you all today. Welcome, and we're so happy you could join us. It's Palm Sunday, it's Baptism Sunday. Let's stand together and celebrate the good things the Lord has done. When I'm in the roughest water, I won't go under, I won't drown. And when I'm in over my head, I know that you won't let me down. And when I'm broken and down to nothing, I know that you are always up to something good. I know that. surrounds me I won't fear and when I'm broken and down to nerve That's because of Jesus. We are children of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And let's go to pray to our Heavenly Father. Our Lord, we just want to thank you for what Jesus did, that we who were once far from you, even alienated and enemies, that Christ has brought us close. That as we enter this Easter week, we are reminded that you indeed wrap your love's loving arms around us as Jesus stretched out his arms and surrendered to the cross. Father, I pray for those who need you to split the sea, who need a miracle in their life. Would you go ahead and do that? Would you do what nothing else could possibly do? We pray, Father, for your power and strength in our life. We pray that we would walk in our new identity as sons and daughters of you. 
We pray, Father, that you would bring peace and you would liberate. We pray for those who feel that they are in the bondage of sin or the grip of death or the grip of hopelessness. Lord, that you would break the chains and that you would free us to be able to walk fully and wholly with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to welcome you, invite you to have a seat. Maybe if you could move in, there are still a few people coming and uh, let uh, some extra space at the end so people don't have to crawl across. Uh, this is Palm Sunday, according to the church calendar. It marks the beginning of Holy Week, uh, the week of Jesus' last life, uh, last week of life, obviously living up and leading up to his death and his resurrection. And for a number of weeks before Palm Sunday, Jesus was hiding. He was outside of the city of Jerusalem. He didn't want to enter because he knew what would happen, that there were many who were hating him and who were plotting against his life. And he and his disciples stayed outside. But then Sunday came, and he knew it was time to go public. And so he asked a couple of his disciples to go and find the foal of a donkey that he could ride. And the disciples kind of looked, I think, inquisitively at him, like, we just want to take a donkey. And he said, if somebody asks, just tell them the Lord needs it. And of course, they go, they find the foal of a donkey, they begin to untie and take it. And the owner said, hey, wait a minute. And they said, the Lord needs it. And the owner said, okay. I love how open-handed that guy was to just let them take the donkey. Imagine... After the service, you go, you find a nice car in the parking lot, you begin to kind of hotwire it. Someone said, hey, wait a minute. And you're like, well, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. What does the Lord need that we can offer? And Jesus is riding on a donkey, as was the custom for kings of Israel, not a horse, not that's high, not that people look up to, but that people are eye to eye with. And Jesus walks through the streets humbly, eye to eye, saying, I'm with you, I see you, I know you. They were laying down palm branches. The palm trees were a symbol of victory and might. And they were singing Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. Hosanna is an odd Aramaic word. It, it kind of means, Lord, save me. It's a prayer, but it's also a praise. It also means the Lord has saved us. And they saw the King Jesus riding in, and they had such hope, such expectation. They believed in what Jesus could do. Lord, save us, but you have saved us. Rescue us, and Lord, you've rescued us. And that's what God does. In the moment that we pray, he also answers. And for that day, thousands of people went very public with their faith. And even though it was dangerous, they said, hey, we want to see Jesus as king. Although five days later, many of those same people would shout, crucify him. It's hard to go public with our faith, isn't it? It's sometimes hard in the midst of social media and the trends of our society and, and what some people say to go public with our faith. And yet this is what God invites us to. And today we have uh, 23 people all acro uh, across the morning who are going public with their faith in baptism. They are making a public declaration of what has happened inside their hearts, that they've received Jesus, that they understand he's their savior, that they've surrendered to him, and they've too come to a place where he's their king, that they say, Lord saved us, and they're going to celebrate today the Lord has saved them. The Apostle Paul writes a little bit about baptism. He says it's a perfect picture that when we go under the water, you kind of go under and the water covers you. It's a picture of just dying to our old life. And when we come out, as we're being raised in victorious power to new life. As Jesus was triumphant in his entry in Jerusalem, we are raised to life. We have a new life, a new community, a new hope, a new power, a new strength. And it's an outward expression of that inward inner conviction we have. 
And so as you watch the stories and see these people being baptized, I encourage you, pray for them. Pray for that power of God at work in their life. Celebrate them in the lobby when you see them after the service. If you've not been baptized yourself, we have another baptism coming up in June. Watch for the courses, just an opportunity. Or if you're interested in what baptism is, you maybe just want to even sign up for that course. But as these people share their story, would you pray for them and celebrate that they reached out, Lord, save me, and now the Lord has saved them. So I invite you to hear Vikram's story and his testimony. The constant hustle and bustle of my life left me feeling lost and without direction. I couldn't shake the feeling of uncertainty about whether I had made any real impact on the world or the people in my life. Each day felt like a struggle to find a sense of purpose and to find true happiness. The question that plagued me most was whether there was anyone out there who truly cared for me and my well-being. This feeling has been with me for as long as I can remember, causing me to doubt my abilities and question my value as a person. Despite my accomplishments and misgivings, this feeling of inadequacy persists and leaves me feeling lost and alone in the vast universe. As a child, I was introduced to reading through the children's Bible, the first book I ever read cover to cover. In two separate instances, I found myself amid critical accidents where I was blessed to have the prayers of two kind strangers who invoked the name of Jesus. I started coming to church in October and after listening to a few sermons and attending life group events, I realized I am racked with guilt and remorse for my actions and inaction over the years. I understood that I needed a savior. Two people very close to me took the time to listen to my life story and introduce me to church and Jesus. During our conversations, I felt an emotional breakthrough as the walls I had built around me had crumbled and I felt a sense of comfort from the divine presence in my life. In the third week of November 2023, I asked Jesus to forgive me, help me forgive myself and guide me to the path of eternal life. I am truly grateful for the kindness and experience they offered me. Ever since I started following Jesus, I felt a sense of security like never before. It's as if a weight has been lifted off my shoulders and now I'm able to focus more on making progress in my life. Whenever I face any worrisome or negative thoughts, I take the opportunity to communicate with Jesus. This helps me reflect on my actions and thoughts and allows me to grow as a person. Knowing that I have someone who always listens to me, cares for me and guides me in the right directions is truly comforting. I feel motivated to reach out to the others and try to help them. I am being baptized today to declare my acceptance faith in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. I have been reborn and given a new life and be reborn with a new life. With a strong sense of purpose and determination, I decided to move forward and embrace this new path with open arms. So we have uh, Chris with a uh... Vikram here today. Chris is one of uh, Vikram's friends, was also instrumental in his uh, coming to faith. And so we get to baptize him together today. It's going to be awesome. So Vikram, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Vikram, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I grew up as a pastor's kid in a Christian household, went to church on Sunday, every Sunday for all of my life. Uh, there has never been a moment in my life where I didn't know of Jesus. During my university years is where I would say I stepped the furthest away from God, caught up in worldly things with all the new places, faces, and environments around me. Throughout those years, making what I believe to be meaningful connections with those surrounding me, I quickly came to realize that there was not much fulfillment with the relationships that I had. There was even a point where I stepped away from my parents, turning my back on them for selfish reasons. I began to wonder why there was solitude in the company I found myself in. 
uh, pondering this, uh, a verse came to me that was spoken to me. Uh, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I knew that I was not baptized despite growing up in a Christian household. Perhaps it was being the last born child of three children under immigrant parents who left their entire lives to come to Canada. It may have been something that was not possible at the time while growing up. I believed that I needed to be this holy or this faithful before getting baptized, but I know that this was just lies in my head to cover up my own shame. Since leaning into Jesus, I have improved my patience, gained more compassion, and continue to strive to walk a holy life the way that Jesus did. I know that the changes in my behaviors and attitude are simply God's love and patience overflowing to others around me. I have vastly improved my relationship with my parents and we share many happy moments regularly. I've come to understand that there is no right time or prerequisite level of holiness needed to be baptized. God has no prerequisites and he has been waiting for me, his prodigal son, to return. I'm at a point in my life where I am no longer fine with just knowing of Jesus, but I am pursuing to know Jesus. Inmo, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Yes. Yeah. Inmo, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before I came to Christ, I lived my life my own way, how I wanted to, without any accountability to anyone else but myself. I did what I chose to do without caring for anyone else's feelings. I was always chasing happiness in the wrong places and didn't seem to be very happy. Whatever I did, whoever I was with. I grew up in a secular household of five boys and two girls. God was never mentioned, ever. However, we lived about eight houses down from a united church and I remember the music every Sunday morning and was always intrigued by it. During school that year, I was bullied extremely badly by many kids. One would start picking on me and the others would follow. Many sleepless nights, low esteem and extreme anxiety played, made me feel like I couldn't do it anymore and I really didn't want to live. One night, I was in tears and completely broken down and was sobbing uncontrollably. I was afraid I was going to wake up my family and felt completely ashamed and embarrassed as I was taught to be tough in everything in life. I don't know how to describe it, but at that moment, an overwhelming sense of love came upon me, which I can only attribute to the Holy Spirit. And I know, and I knew everything would be fine. Although I had that encounter with God, I would say at that young age, I didn't really understand it. I didn't have anybody to talk to about this experience, so I didn't continue to grow in my understanding of what it meant to follow Jesus. Fast forward many years later, amidst more turmoil from living and leading my life the way I wanted to without God, I had finally had enough of being hurt by doing things my way. I've always felt God's presence with me, but just ignored his blessings and kept running ahead of him. But he was always trying to catch up with me. I had no choice but to finally surrender as he was going to keep pursuing me until I stopped running and started following. Now finally I have peace in my life. And now I understand love more than I have ever before and know what it's like to offer an ounce of Jesus' love to others as Jesus expects me to. Today I choose to be baptized as God has freely given me his gift of love and his word. I trust in Jesus and fully want a continuously developing relationship with him so I can grow in his love and be more of what he wants me to be. Dan here has been instrumental in uh, walking with Scott on his journey. 
so we're at this point where Dan's ready to baptize him. So Scott, I got one question for you, and that is, are you ready to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Yeah. Scott, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
As a young girl, I can remember always being involved in the church. I attended Sunday services, Friday choir practices, and even summer Bible camps. It was a place where I'd hang out with friends and learn about Jesus. Although I was familiar with the stories in the Bible, I thought they were just stories, like the ones you would tell kids. I knew of Jesus like how you would know a character in a movie, but I never had a personal relationship with him. When I entered my late teens, I drifted away from the church and became disinterested. Partying, vanity, insecurities, and influences from the world consumed my life. I didn't like who I was becoming because I felt like I wasn't living authentically. So, in 2021, I decided to delete social media. I was in a very strange place because I felt so disconnected, but deep down, I knew this was the right choice. At that point, I rarely attended church, but there was a Sunday during Easter where I felt something in my heart telling me I needed to be at that sermon. So, I quickly woke up, got dressed, and attended church with my mom. That sermon brought me to tears from the moment the worship team began to sing. I felt all my shame, my guilt, my fears, and my sorrows lift from me, and all I felt was God's love and forgiveness. That day changed me, and I drew closer to God's word. A few weeks after that sermon, I hit the lowest point in my life. I had a painful relationship with my father, my long-term relationship was about to end, and I was losing my friends I had known for years. Most people would have blamed God and asked, why me? But the presence I felt during that Easter sermon reminded me to keep my faith and trust in him. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, God promises to make good out of the storm that brings devastation to your life. Reflecting three years later, I can say God's promise prevailed. I want to pursue a relationship with Jesus because knowing him and being loved by him has transformed my life. Everything has changed, like my values, my heart, and my patience. Through these inner transformations, I have been able to heal, restore, and nurture all of my relationships. There are so many people to thank for my journey. Thank you to Bayview Glen and my Alpha group, The Chosen, for helping me to understand and speak the word of God. Thank you to my boyfriend and my beautiful friends for your loving support. And most importantly, thank you to my mom for being the perfect example of God's love, strength, and peace. Four years ago today, my mom gave me this Bible and I was preparing my heart to write this testimony. I randomly opened up to the front page and noticed the date written on the inside. It was March 24th, 2020. Four years later, on that exact date, I have chosen to be baptized. Today, I dedicate my life to serving God and allowing Him to work through me because I want everyone to experience the gifts of mercy, love, and peace God gives you when you choose to walk with Him. Well, this is Anna, Andrew's mom. It's a big moment for the two of them. Yeah. Andrea, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Andrea, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Christina Liu. I was raised by my parents who were kind, open-minded, and loved me deeply. I have my own lovely family in Toronto. My professional background was as a surgeon and a medical school teacher back in China. Early from my childhood, I was so curious about this world. Why is this universe and everything on earth so mysterious? Who is so great to create such a wonderful, beautiful and a harmless planet and various fantastic creature. Although I have read a lot of books, it is hard for me to find the real answer. From the first day I went to school, I have been taught to pursue truth through science. 
everything should have its reason and proof. But gradually, I realized that science has its limitation. Scientists in every field only can discover the limited truth of nature, and we, as human beings, are so negligible compared to the vast universe. There are tons of mysterious issues which are beyond our understanding and capability. I began to truly believe in the existence of the God who has infinite power and everything is under his control. Like most people, I have experienced many ups and downs throughout my life. But I feel that I have always been blessed, led, and protected by God. Last year, when I came to Canada, my friend Nisa, who is a very faithful Christian, asked me if I wanted to follow Jesus and become a Christian without any hesitation. I said yes and decided to be a follower of Christ. From that day onwards, I go to the church every Sunday, read the Bible, attend Alpha course. I have met many kind and warm-hearted fellow Christians from all walks of life. The more and the deeper I know about Jesus and what the Holy Bible is all about, the stronger faith I have developed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Looking back, I feel so grateful that I have always been blessed by God as he makes many impossible things become possible. As in the Gospel of Luke, for nothing is impossible with God. Coincidentally, my birthday is in March, so today I decided to be baptized and reborn and completely submit my life to follow Jesus and be closer to him in each day of my life. Thanks to God, thanks to my family, my friends, and all of you, God bless us. Amen. Christina, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Yes. Christina, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My name is Leticia Burton, and I grew up in a Caribbean household in a country called Trinidad and Tobago. I always knew about Jesus growing up, as I would attend Sunday school as a little girl, and as I got older, I would attend church from time to time throughout the years. Some things have happened to me that have caused me pain, and from this pain, I held a lot of anger and fear and self-doubt within myself. I lived like this for many years, until two years ago, I prayed and asked Christ to heal me, but I wouldn't let him do his job because I would still be questioning him. I thought about suicide and just leaving this world because I really felt like I had no purpose again. But I knew that was not the answer because he kept talking to me through other people around me and when I would pick up my Bible through scriptures that I would read. Last year, October, one of my friends invited me to attend Bayview Glen with her, and one of the worship songs that we're playing was The Father's House by Corey Osbury. When I started singing, Oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome here anymore. You're in the Father's house. I just had this feeling of peace, and tears starting coming from my eyes. It's like this weight I had been carrying with me for years was taken away. And from that day, I started following Jesus Christ and reading his word more and more. I continue to attend church and it has really helped me with this journey. Since I have begun following Jesus, my life has been more peaceful. I love myself more and I know that he loves me by the work he has done and continue to do in my life. 
I am getting baptized today because this is my next step in following Jesus Christ. And it can also encourage somebody to take the next step in their own faith. Leticia, is it your desire to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Yeah. Leticia, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. stand as we sing this song.
Church, would you have a seat and um, turn your eyes to the screen once again? I was born in a Christian family uh, and came to know Jesus at a very young age. Honestly, I don't remember a time when I didn't know who he was. I do have a really clear memory of wanting Jesus to love me as lo much as he loved my parents. And even though I was very young at the time, I do think that moment is when I became a believer. Um, as I grew up, I remained confident in the reality of Jesus and my parents put in real effort to invite questions and constantly build into my faith. And while I grew in understanding when it came to intellectual questions about the Bible, my day-to-day -day relationship with Jesus boiled down to believing in God and not doing anything bad, I guess. And so during this time, I became really consumed with my career in rhythmic gymnastics as well. Um, I would train for 30 hours a week and would often fly away from home to compete. And my mood and my self-worth were really wrapped up in my success in gymnastics and, and that goalpost for how satisfied I could be with myself, kept moving. And uh, at first, all I wanted was to make the national team. And then when I finally did, I was over the moon and excited until the next season when I quickly beat myself up for not being in the top three. And so, however, I just, I really got a wake up call when I turned 16 to that. And though I'd always had really harsh coaches, the environment at the gym grew really unbearable for me, especially regarding their negative talk around body image and I would cry every day before going to practice and realized after about a year that I had to quit. And so the problem was I didn't quite know how to view myself without gymnastics. Uh, for lack of better words, I felt second rate and like a quitter. Um, and noticing those feelings was a real turning point for me. Uh, I had to confront the fact that even though I claimed my identity was in Jesus, Clearly, it had not been completely, and in my sadness and discomfort, I realized that my attitude needed to change, and by the grace of God, it did, um, through spending more time in the Word and in prayer and in Christian community. Um, my identity in Jesus has really taken root, and my desire to serve and spread the joy of the gospel has continued to grow. Um, now, I feel that life as a follower of Jesus is much more than just avoiding sin or answering questions, even those are really important. Um, being a follower of Jesus now is letting him be that driving purpose of everything I do in life and understanding that his way is far better. And I'm getting baptized today to celebrate that God who has constantly pursued me and forgiven me and been incredibly gracious and kind to me all the days of my life. We have Dana's father, John, here to baptize her. It's always a special moment. Parents can baptize their kids. So Dana, just have one question for you. Is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Dana, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Lamb. I'm from Toronto. I was raised Catholic. At age 16, three significant, separate, yet related events touched me. First, the tragic death of a schoolmate of mine named Gabriel. And secondly, the beginning of a search for meaning in my life and the world, which in hindsight I realized was inspired by Jesus. And thirdly, I began writing music. I play the piano. Between the ages of 16 and 23, writing music helped me process and spiritually fight back against my growing lament over the evil of the world. As I wrote more songs, I came to believe that my music could change the world. But the apparent apathy of society discouraged me. I gradually convinced myself that my biggest dream was too lofty and I buried my talent. I gave up. At 31, I married, had children, led a normal life, a life unaware of the real truth of Jesus. A complex sequence of interactions of events and people in my life, past and present, combined with my own searching over a number of years, led me to find Jesus in what, in hindsight, was the simplest place imaginable for me, inside myself. I received encouragement in my acceptance of Jesus from a longtime Christian missionary friend. Jesus is very easy to find if you really look in the right way. 
Jesus helps me shed things that held me back, like discouragement, procrastination, anger, guilt, and fear. God fixes broken things inside you. Some things inside me I feel as though they have just begun. Possessing the truth of Jesus, I act differently. I do things unlike my old self, like meeting new people, being more determined, smiling more, forgiving and asking forgiveness, and showing gratitude to God for everything he has done for me. And now, age 50 approaches. I'm so close to it. With this baptism, I find myself under the water. Very briefly, I go swimming. I was afraid to show my faith for a long time, but not today. God has always spoken to me. It just took a while to learn how to listen. But God needs to speak not just to me, but through me. I have a renewed sense of purpose, a determination to take on my greatest challenge. God told me not to give up. God gave me my dream back and told me it could come true. I can change the world, as long as I put my faith in Him. And so can all of you. I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, and I believe in you too. God can do anything. God can fix this broken world. It starts with you. Brian, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Absolutely. Yes. Brian, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Aravan. My friends call me Ard, and I'm from Iran. Growing up, my path was marked by adversity. As a young boy, I often found myself feeling lost and depressed. While I had wonderful friends and family, there was always an emptiness inside that could not be fulfilled. I struggled to understand what I was searching for. And in my home country, questioning anything but the norm is not an option. At a young age, I was fortunate enough to travel abroad and visit my first church. I vividly remember that day when I walked in, there was a service in progress. I stood back and watched, being swept away by the peace and the beauty of the scene. Since then, I have been fascinated by the church and the Christian community. Unfortunately, after returning to my home country, my talks of religion and self-exploration were not allowed. Luckily, I had some people in my life that led me in the right direction. After university, I was working with a Christian group to help those with hardships lead a better life. Surrounded by my Christian colleagues, I was encouraged to explore my beliefs more deeply, seeing the impact our group had on the, on the oppressed, seeing how Jesus could touch the lives of so many. I made the decision to follow Jesus and become a devout follower. I immediately felt at home with him, an overwhelming sense of serenity. Today, I'm happy I no longer have those unanswered questions, nor the inability to practice my faith. I feel so relieved now that I have discovered what was missing this whole time, and that my feelings of hopelessness and being lost are no longer present. Feeling blessed and full of gratitude, I'm ready to embrace my commitment and devotion to Jesus. I feel humbled by the support I received by my new friends at Bayview Glen and I'm very grateful to be part of this great community. I look forward to the next chapter of my life as a Christian. Ard, is it your desire to follow Jesus as long as you live? Yes. Yeah. Ard, on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? I mean, what amazing stories. Thank you all for sharing your story and for reminding us of the power of Jesus. So I, I hope you're reminded of a few things. One is that there's no place dark enough that Jesus cannot meet us. Right? No matter where we are, how difficult that is, Jesus meets us. Remember those who are praying for a family member, keep praying and don't give up, keep praying. Thirdly, when you give someone a Bible, write a date in it. 
right? Because you never know what God's going to do on that date. Isn't that incredible? And fourthly, invite someone to Easter. Didn't you hear that? How powerful an invitation is and how many people's lives are just changed because someone else goes public with their faith and invites that person to join them in worship. And so I would encourage you as we begin this Easter week that we end it well. On Friday, we have two services at 9.30 and 11, an opportunity to gather together and reflect upon what Jesus did on the cross. And then for our Easter celebration, we have four service opportunities, Friday or Saturday night at 6.30, Sunday at our usual times of 9.30, 11.15, and then again at one o'clock. And we wanna make as much space and opportunity for people to join and hear about Jesus. So I encourage you even now, who would you invite? Who could you invite to join us and to celebrate and remember? And we have lots of room and lots of space for people. And finally, if you're here and you haven't accepted Jesus, we would love to talk with you down front. We would love to explore with you. Or maybe you're ready to just make that choice today. And if you want to follow Jesus and experience what these people have, I invite you to pray with me. Would you pray? Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for these testimonies, these powerful stories of what you've done. And so, Lord, I just pray for those who maybe today want to make that decision. And if that's you, I just invite you to say, Dear Jesus, I have been searching and longing for truth in my life. And I've looked for it in all the wrong places. But Jesus, I know you are the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus, come into my life, be Lord of my life, take charge of my life. I know that you died and that you came back to life so that I might live and help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, may God bless you today. May you go in his grace and power following the Holy Spirit. And we look forward to see you next weekend as we celebrate that triumphant risen Christ. God bless you. Go in grace and power.